Jeremy's kids are always leaving stuff around my desk. So I had a few ideas for my next YouTube video, but I couldn't quite decide. So I put a poll in the community tab on my YouTube channel and you guys, 51% of you voted for me to do a video on how I built the 10,000 shots app. So that's what I'm gonna do. Before I get into how I built the app, I should probably tell you why we built it in the first place and what even is the 10,000 shot challenge. The 10,000 shot challenge is basically what it sounds like. You try to take 10,000 shots, try to mix it up. You do some snapshots, wrist shots, slap shots. It's great for kids, great for any hockey player who wants to improve their shot over the off season or even mid season. Now, if you know Jeremy and I, we're always trying to find ways to give back to the hockey community and keep people working on their skills and having fun playing hockey. So we were looking for an app idea that would be simple to make and that could have a lot of value for you guys. So that's when the idea for the 10,000 shots app came up because Jeremy's done the challenge before and just told people to log them out of shots like in a notebook <laughs> Yawn. and keep track of it that way. But I told him, I was like, that's a pretty simple app to make. You just got to choose the type of shot. How many pucks to shot and keep track of it. So I told them, I said, and I remember, I was like, that's easy. I could build that in a day, like easy, no problem. Uh, it turns out not quite, but I did get pretty close. I actually was trying to do a video on how to build an, or I tried to build an app in one day and yeah, it just didn't, it didn't pan out that way. I'll show you guys what I managed to get done in one day and then I'll go on to tell you kind of about my process, how I designed the app and how I actually built it and then the whole process of releasing it to the app stores, that took a week in itself. So before I actually sat down and started to build the app, I needed to get an idea of the full feature set that the app was gonna need. So that's when I started brainstorming with Jeremy, making sure that we had everything ironed out and that we were keeping it as simple as possible because at that time I was trying to build it in a day. To add a feature where um, people can like order food from a local restaurant, <laughs> like in case you get, hungry while you're training. Yeah, I mean, yeah, let's just build Uber Eats. Yeah, like, might like as well. integrate that into it as well. And then maybe like people can take pictures and share it on like some sort of feed mm. while they're training, like, no. Oh. Yeah, just basic features. Just add, add those. So after we got the outlandish feature ideas out of the way, no Uber Eats, none of that. Man, get that out of here. We ended up settling on a few key features. One, obviously you need to be able to track the amount of shots you're taking of each type of shot. So that's slap shot, wrist shot, snap shot, and backhand. Two, it should keep track of how long you're shooting pucks for in each shooting session. And three, their data should be saved so that if they accidentally delete the app or get a new phone, they can log in and their data will be reusable in the future. Now those were the initial features that I set out to build, but any software engineer will tell you, the features that you set out to build normally aren't the only ones that you end up building. Once I knew what the full set of features were, then I could start mocking up the low fidelity mockups they're called. That basically just means that you're not putting too much time into them. It just needs to include all of the features so that when you go to build it, you don't miss anything. If it doesn't work, you can toss it. No big deal. So as you can see, these mockups were really basic. I just wanted to get an idea of what was gonna be on each screen. And these were only for the initial features that we came up with. We ended up adding a lot of features. But one thing that did come out of these mockups was the progress bar showing the amount of shots in sequence out of 10,000 so they can see their overall progress instead of just a total for each shot and then how many they took. It gives a visual representation of it. And I hadn't thought of that until I started drawing up the mockups. Once I was happy with the mockups and the overall direction of how I was picturing the app looking in my head, I needed to decide what platform to build the app on. Now I have a bit of experience in both Android and iOS development, but for this, I wanted it to be quick. So I needed to find a cross-platform framework that I could develop in it. And I've used React Native before, um, Xamarin is another one. But at the time of building this app, I had just discovered a new platform and I've been working with it for a, a month or two called Flutter. Flutter is a toolkit built by Google to allow you to quickly create apps in both Android, iOS, and web, all from the same code. That's really impressive. Whoa. It was really easy to set up a development environment in Flutter. And once I had a solid understanding of how Flutter widgets work, it's basically run and gun. Everything is laid out via columns and rows and you can position them at the start, end, or middle. I really like the system that they've set up for that. It reminds me of uh, Flexbox in CSS, if you've ever heard of that. Maybe I should do a video on CSS. I haven't done anything like that before. Let me know in the comments if you wanna see a video on just basic web design CSS style, or maybe even SAS. So I spent a solid couple hours setting up the basic layouts with adding the How To Hockey logo and all this stuff. 
then I needed to actually let people log in. And if you know app development or even web development, logging in, once you incorporate that, it can be really complex. But luckily for us, Google has us covered. There's a service called Firebase that offers authentication. And it's really easy. You go to Firebase, you can set up a project, export the config file, import it into your Android and iOS folders of your Flutter app, and then you're pretty much good to go. You just need to add a login button and there's lots of tutorials online to do that. So I had that all set up and connected it to a, a Firebase database called Firestore. Then it was just a matter of setting up some basic calls to the Firestore database to update people's shot totals and track their shooting sessions. I could probably do a whole tutorial on how to save data with Firebase, but there's so much out there already. It's really easy, you just Google it. There's even Flutter videos that cover it. Like I think there's a Flutter YouTube channel you could follow. So if you're really interested into cross-platform development, I really recommend Flutter. I think it's going places. It's gonna be the new React. Well, folks, you heard it here first on Channel 5 News. So by the end of day one, I had the app looking pretty good and I could let people log in, but you couldn't really do too much. Over the course of the next week following day one, I spent most of the time just doing the grunt work, setting up the saving of the sessions, pulling the data into their profile. I'm pretty sure I spent two days on the progress bar alone to get it to calculate the percentage of the width properly. That was a nightmare, but it looks really cool. Then to add some finishing touches, I pulled in a chart library to display the total number of shots in like a little half circle. If you have the app now, you'll notice I actually updated it to be a full circle because I thought it looked better, kind of more like a hockey puck. I was so wrapped up in building this app that I spent the entire weekend working on it and got it ready for a release the following week. The feature set was pretty simple. It would let you start a shooting session, choose the type of shot you have, set the number of pucks that you have, that's critical, and then a button to save it and finish your session when you're done. That was the basic functionality. And then when you were done, you could see your shooting sessions in your profile. I think that was about it. After I built all of this, I talked with Jeremy and we, I came up with a great idea to allow you to add teammates so that you could see how your friends are doing in the challenge. And this has come in clutch. With that came a lot of uh, new features. I don't have footage of me building it because at this point I had given up on doing a video on building an app in a day because it had already been like two weeks, three weeks at this point. But I ended up adding a Dart package, which is just the programming language of Flutter that lets you scan QR codes and generate them. So I used that so that people could add their friends really easily or just look them up by their name or email in the app. Once we released this update, we got tons of requests in the app to become teammates. And you guys are killing us, by the way, in the shot totals, especially me. I, I think I only got like 2000 actual shots. Um, I think Jeremy's closer to five now. And since then, we've been thinking of even more new features. Uh, we wanted to make it easier for people that don't play hockey a lot to learn a couple pointers right in with the app. So I added a tab for learning, which shows some sample lessons from the pond and some tips on each type of shot. And in our latest update, in the release that's available in the app stores now, we added the ability to choose avatars. And my personal favorite feature is that in the more tab that we added, when you complete 10,000 shots, it gives you a little pop-up that comes up with a coupon that you can get a secret sniper snapback hat. It's basically the How To Hockey logo, but with crosshairs on it. I can't find one kicking around. That's how rare they are. We don't even have one in the office. I think I covered everything. This app turned out to be a lot more work than I thought it was gonna be, but I'm really proud of how it turned out. And we already have some great suggestions from people in the reviews, and we have some good ideas for new features ourselves, but we're just too busy right now. So we'll probably implement some of them next year. There's a couple bugs here and there that I have to figure out, but overall I'm satisfied with the result. That just about wraps up how I built the 10,000 shots app. I know I really breezed over a lot of this stuff, but I'm trying to keep it succinct and to the point for you guys so that it's entertaining. If you guys want to download the app, I'll put a link in the description. And if you enjoyed this video and you like this style of content, let me know in the comments. I want to hear what you guys want to know about, what you guys want to see, what if you have any crazy app ideas that I should build. I mean, I'm not a full on app developer, but I like to learn. So anything's possible. Make sure you subscribe and hit that like button. Last I checked, I was at over 1700 subscribers. Maybe we can get to 2000 before I upload my next video. Thanks to all the haters who watched to the very end. You guys are the OGs. We'll see you guys in the next video.